Hi, my name is Tom Pukish, president of the Wayne Economic Development Council. And we are a nonprofit economic development organization that serves Wayne County, Ohio. And we're doing a segment called Wayne Employers Demonstrating Care. Uh, there's a lot of negativity that's going on in, in the community with this uh, COVID-19 virus. And, but there's also a lot of uh, bright spots that are, that, are, that are popping up. And so this segment is really just to highlight some of, the, some of the good things, some of the positive things that are going on in our community. And so today I've invited Joe Knudsen. He's the president of P. Graham Dunn to join us in a conversation and just kind of talk about some things that uh, they're doing with their business. So welcome, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, sure. So um, once again, a lot of businesses are, are being creative uh, as they, uh, as they kind of make their way through this. These are just, these are times that, that we've, uh, and these uncertainties we've never experienced before. And uh, there's a lot of neat things that are going on. So your business, uh, you are creators of inspiration, art, gift, and, and home decor. And mm -hmm. your business has definitely shifted uh, over the past uh, month and a half or not. You are now entered into the, uh, the PPE, uh, personal protection equipment uh, uh, world. So mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about that and, and, and how you guys uh, transitioned into this, uh, into this environment. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, you're right that we are all looking for creative ways to navigate these, um, these times. And uh, for us, I mean, and I think like many of our, um, our colleagues out there, you know, there were every day, it seemed like the, the foundation under your feet kept shifting. You know, we didn't know what we were going to be able to do, what we couldn't do. And so um, it must have been, um, you know, a, a number of days after uh, there were some um, shutdowns in the state as far as our ability to, um, to work here on site at PGRAM done, that a longtime customer and friend of ours, um, Tom Messner from TKM Printing up in Akron, he reached out to our team and he uh, was inquiring um, what places could provide some assembly uh, work for a project that he was plugged into, and that's producing medical face shields um, that would get shipped out to the Northeast. So we, we worked out <clears throat> a deal with um, Tom, and we were able to start bringing some of our employees back into the shop and retool our processes to produce these, these shields. Um, in fact, even in the early days, it was a, a challenge just to get uh, something as simple as staples. And so we, we leaned on the community who, um, who came to our, our call and, and would drop off supplies and, and help us get going. So this, this transition, um, what, what kind of challenges did you face you know, right out of, the, out of the gate? Was it, was it an easy transition? I mean, what, what, how, how this, talk me through this. Yeah, I mean, the, the product itself is not terribly complex to produce, um, but we went from, you know, producing all this, this home decor product to uh, face shields uh, basically overnight. Um, we needed to tap into supply chains to, to get the materials that we needed to produce these. Um, we reconfigured a number of our operations within the shop to um, help develop uh, forms of efficiency. Uh, for example, we use a lot of conveyor systems to move uh, products and materials around. And we, would, we disconnected a number of those conveyor systems and set them up as standalone assembly areas for these, these shields. Um, we had to address, of course, uh, the safety concerns. Uh, if we were gonna invite some of our staff back into this environment, we need to ensure that they're gonna be working in a safe environment and that we're taking every precaution that we can to ensure their health and safety. What kind of steps were those? Like, what, what were some of the things that you implemented that's, that's new compared to how you did it before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, we did, uh, some of the things were very simple, uh, for example, you know, doorways, those are heavily trafficked areas, um, uh, hot touch points. And what we would do is uh, we installed a number of um, kick handles uh, that you can open doors with your, your feet. Uh, we actually propped a lot of our entryways and exit ways instead of letting those uh, doors shut. Um, the facility, you know, could be quite loud when we're producing um, our wood giftware products. 
and uh, it's whisper quiet in here right now with uh, the face shield assembly. So we, we can really open the place up. But um, yeah, we had, to, uh, we had to do quite a bit to ensure a, a safe environment. There's regular rotations of uh, cleaning and disinfecting um, high touch points. Um, the communal areas are uh, deep cleaned on a schedule. Uh, we set up um, various uh, uh, scheduling adjustments to shift so that we didn't have too many people overlapping. Uh, right now, we're actually working on our time clocks to um, expand the number of places that people can get uh, clocked in just so that we don't risk having you know, three or four people waiting in uh, the same area to, to clock in. It's, it's all these little things uh, and they add up. How are the employees dealing with this? Has it been an easy transition for them as far as like the overall morale of people? Well, I, I would say that the overall morale is very positive. And, uh, you know, we're a community here. Um, I think in times like this, it's, it's a time where we lean um, neighbor on neighbor. And, you know, we, you know some of us are, are picking up groceries for our friends and family. Uh, we're doing things that, to help each other. And so I think, um, I think there's a natural tendency to uh, turn inward and say, well, let's, what, what can we do to, to help each other in this environment to um, be able to produce these masks and, of course, impact the, um, the national response to this crisis? Mm -hmm. Great. So this, uh, as you see going forward, um, this will eventually turn around and the economy will come back the way it, uh, uh, the way it was and, and hopefully even, even better. Do you foresee uh, this being still a part of your business as you go forward, or will this kind of go away? I wish I had a crystal ball. Yeah. I wish I knew exactly what was coming down the pipeline. I will say this, in the, uh, what has it been, about four weeks or so of, of producing these face shields, we, um, we've, we've increased our production every single day. And in fact, actually, while we're talking, uh, we are passing the 1 million unit mark uh, for face shields that have been produced here in the facility, uh, which is crazy. I mean, we, we honestly, we, uh, we had a little management meeting today and uh, we're just, I guess, um, in awe of the amount of teamwork that has brought this all together. In fact, I asked my production um, manager, our, our vice president of production, Robert Shetler, who um, really was the hub to this organizational effort. He's been 43 years here, here at PGRAM Dunn. He's seen it all. And uh, he said he's never experienced such uh, an example of, of teamwork and people pulling together to get the job done. So as far as moving forward, we hope that there is going to be a continued demand. Well, I shouldn't say we, we hope for continued demand for the face shields. Um, we obviously want the, uh, we want the world to move past this, uh, this crisis and to get things under control. Um, but we expect that there will be some continued demand for uh, a fair amount of time with uh, the normalization of some of our production uh, facilities here in the, in the coming days, weeks, and months. Um, it's going to be interesting to juggle doing these face shields while um, getting back on track, you know, uh, responding to the needs of our customers. That, that's fantastic. That's uh, one million shields in a very short period of time. So that's got to give you uh, uh, great confidence moving forward to, uh, you know, who knows where your, your business could go and what different avenues you could go in the future. So congratulations to you on, on, on all that. Thank you. I, um, you know, having been through the 08, 09 recession, uh, the housing crisis, um, there, there are some silver linings to this. Uh, you know, we're, we're expecting business to be difficult uh, the remainder of the year. Um, we do not expect everything to bounce back exactly where it was. We, I mean, we hope for the best, but we're preparing for a diminished, um, diminished revenue for the rest of the year. However, I will say this, that out of the 08, 09 uh, housing crisis, we, we've learned how to um, go after things that may not fit exactly in our, our wheelhouse. Uh, we, we will be creative in our responses to our customers' needs, doing things that we've never tried before. And, and to me, that's very exciting too. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I, I, I'm always talking about the great companies that we have here in, in Wayne County, and uh, there's tremendous leadership. And, uh, 
you know, companies are, are getting through this and they're finding ways to be successful. And this is just a great example of, uh, uh, of a company that uh, has found those avenues. So congratulations to, to all your success. And uh, we love hearing some of the positive things that are going on in our community. Um, so as we wrap up, I always like to take notice of, uh, of other things that are going on in our community. Um, we have the, uh, the Wayne County Community Foundation uh, they serve uh, our, our community and just a great organization. Uh, but they've created a emergency grant fund. Uh, what they're doing is they're helping nonprofits, uh, uh, giving loan or not loans, but grants to nonprofits that uh, are in the uh, in the medical and the food and the housing uh, arena. Uh, they're providing those services. So, if anybody out there wanted to uh, to get involved and contribute to uh, to this and be a part of the uh, solution. Uh, please seek them out. Uh, they're always looking for, uh, for additional funds. So I wanted to recognize them. So uh, with that, uh, Joe, thank you so much for, uh, for spending some time with us today and, and sharing your ideas and, uh, and showing us uh, some of the, the things that you're doing in, in, in our community. And I, and I want to thank you for your leadership. Well, that goes both ways. Thank you for uh, being a source of information and helping to uh, bring us together so we can learn from each other and, and, and get through this. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.